Hello friends, welcome to my another video tutorial on programming, competitive programming and here in this particular video I am going to discuss one of the very popular but simple problem. If you know the idea you can do that, if you don't know the idea then if you want to solve in other way then you may get time complexity error. This is such kind of problem. So the problem is you will be given a number, that number uh, you have to calculate the factorial of that number and in that factorial value how many zeros are appearing at the end that you have to calculate that is also called trailing zeros okay so in this particular website it is uh, clearly mentioned how the formula came i hope if you are preparing for a placement process then obviously for aptitude part you might have done this kind of problems because this kind of problems also asked uh, frequently in the aptitude part of the programming also the aptitude part of the placement uh, inter or interview process also so basically how you can do that see suppose i am asking you determine number of trailing zeros in 7 uh, 777 factorial then simple number of uh, zeros at the end to calculate that what we will do we will take we will use this particular uh, formula that is first i will divide 777 by 5 and then that integer part only I will take. Then I will add that with 777 when it is divided by 25, that integer part I will add. That is 5 into 5, 25 now I am dividing. Then in the next case, next case 5 into 5 into 5, that is 125. With 125 I have to divide uh, this number, 777. And in the next step, 5 into 5 into 5 into 5, that is 625. We, uh, 777 has to be divided with 625 until the particular value uh, does not reach zero okay like suppose after this particular iteration when you will divide 777 by uh, 625 into 5 then obviously if you take um, the integer part only you will get zero right uh, because uh, the uh, denominator will be larger than numerator in that particular case so as a result it is clearly uh, meaningless to add zero value so we are ignoring the higher order terms okay so this is the basic formula is like this what we will do uh, if, if f of n uh, give the number uh, let f of n give the number of trailing zeros in the base 10 representation of n factorial then f of n is equal to n by 5 we have to take integer part only so that this box type function it is given plus n by 5 square plus n by 5 cube uh, dot 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 by uh, plus n by 5 to the power k until this particular value does not reach 0 okay so that's what the fundamental idea is and this is what we are going to use in solving this particular problem which frequently appears in placement process so see here the problem title is trailing zeros in factorial okay so the question says for an integer n find number of trailing zeros in n factorial all right so the input pattern is giving like this the first line contains an integer t denoting total number of test cases in each test cases it contains an integer n okay so like you know this is the uh, uh, frequently given format input format in gigs for gigs problems that is they will not give one test case for a particular iteration they will give multiple test case so for that how many test case you want to run in a single iteration that you have to take first and that many times you have to use the same function or same code again and again for different integer value n all right in each uh, separate line output uh, the answer uh, to the problem separate line that means in the next line we have to print that means system dot out dot print ln we have to use instead of system dot out dot print if we are uh, writing the program in java anyway constant is given one less than equal to t less than equal to 100 and one less than equal to n less than equal to 1000 anyway suppose for this example input is uh, uh, one and uh, nine Two, uh, so we input is one and nine means so uh, one indicates number of test case so only one test case and the value is 9 right the output is 1 why because in 9 factorial only one zero at the end is present so let me show you so here i have uh, here i am uh, calculating the factorial in matlab using the built-in function let me just show you f-a-c-t-o-r-i-a-l factorial is the inbuilt function in matlab matlab is high level language so it is very easy to calculate these things factorial of 9 if we calculate see uh, this hello we are getting and clearly you can see only one zero at the end is present all right so output should be one anyway 
so basically like this you have to solve this problem algorithm you know problem statement you understood compute that before watching my video video for that uh, compile it run it in your uh, uh, offline compiler that may be clips or netbeans or you can compile in online compiler also and check it whether it is giving correct output or not if it is not giving correct output no need to worry here i am explaining okay so first try it once and then check my solution so see here i have written the java code import java.util.star import java.lang. Star import java dot io dot star. This is all. This was already written in this particular compiler. And if and these things are basically required. Java dot util dot star is obviously required if you want to use scanner class uh, to take input, right? Because scanner class is present in util package. Java dot lang dot star is required because I told already told you in this particular algorithm we have to take only integer part. So math dot floor uh, we have to use. Suppose uh, particular seven hundred seventy seven by five. What is the value? 777 by 5 155.4 uh, so 155 if you want to take we have to use floor command right so you know fl double or of ants if we write see 155 so this floor command in matlab you can simply write like this but in java it is present in the uh, length package java.lang.math so we import we have to import that so for that this star will indicate everything will be imported and java.io.star for this particular program timing it is not required but if you are using buffer reader class then it is also required all right then this is our original class gfg okay uh, gfg for geeks for geeks maybe i don't know i have not changed the class name then public static void main string args okay common format scanner obj equal to new scanner system dot in we are creating the object in the scanner class then NT equal to obj dot next in we are taking input number of test cases we have to use like in the input statement it was clearly mentioned the first value contains integer t denoting total number of test cases so that we have to take first as input and then for int i equal to 0 i less than t i plus plus this for loop is used uh, for the iterating that number of test case int a equal to obj dot next in this we are taking as input the number whose factorial we will calculate and uh, uh, basically we will not calculate factorial we have to determine if we calculate the factorial of that number how many zeros will be present in the end okay here three variables i have defined in team in tum equal to zero in tg equal to zero in fg equal to zero then tg is defined as zero and tg will be one only when what who in which way which condition tg will be uh, tg will take some other value in that condition when we will start uh, getting zero value after dividing by the power of five uh, this number when we will divide a number uh, by power of five and when we will get zero as the integer part or the uh, quotient part then we will make tg some other value so that this tg we are going to use for iteration simple code while tg not equal to 1 int g equal to int match dot floor a by fg this is the most important line okay understand it very clearly match dot floor is used to uh, is used for this particular integer part extraction after dividing okay and a by fg fg is what we have defined as 5 so see initially it is divided by 5 right then 25 then 125 power of 5 so basically what we will do fg equal to fg into 5 in the next iteration i will increase the power of 5 that's all and whatever g value we will get we are adding that in the tum variable tum equal to tum plus g so at the end of the execution of the while loop in the tum variable total number of zeros at the end of this particular factorial of this number a will be stored and if g equal to zero that means there is no meaning of further computation because uh, tum equal to tum plus g that means uh, if g is zero tum equal to tum plus zero that means tum only so there is no meaning of adding zero right so that if g equal to equal to 0 we will break that loop so tg equal to 1 and in the next iteration when it will go uh, tg not equal to 1 uh, will not be satisfied because tg equal to 1 if g equal to 0 then it will break the while loop right and then system dot out print ln tum why print ln instead of print because here it is clearly mentioned that in each separate line the output of the answer uh, to the problem okay so uh, to go to the next line we have to use system dot out print ln okay so let me submit this and show you whether the code is working or not so this particular algorithm you need to know 
fundamental formula only if you are preparing for CAD, then you must know this. If you are preparing for aptitude part of replacement process, then also you should know this, okay? Because in aptitude part, mostly this question comes and along with that, this is going to be helpful in this particular program also. Because if you are thinking that I will calculate the factorial of the number and from the uh, from the factorial number, I will expect the digits and uh, expect the digits from the end, and I will check uh, if it is zero or not, and then I will count return the count value. Then your code paka will get time complexity error. Because suppose I am giving a very high value, suppose thousand, ten thousand, then there is compared to factorial itself it will take huge time and moreover a thousand uh, ten thousand like these values if you want to calculate the factorial obviously you should use big integer and then again big integer command remembering those things also difficult so that you can follow this particular principle this if you remember this this will help this will be helpful in both way in aptitude part also along with that in this particular programming also remember this because i have uh, faced this particular uh, problem in the aptitude in two or three um, placement process okay so basically you can see here the code is successfully compiled and run execution time only 0 0.16 correct answer okay so this is all for my this video i am going to post the same code in the comment section of my this video if you want you can check there thank you for watching